Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and we're going to be putting the Thrustmaster TGT and the Fnatic CSL Elite PS4 wheel head to head. These are each company's PlayStation flagship wheels and are priced fairly competitively. So let's see how these two stack up against each other. The TGT is the flagship wheel from Thrustmaster and is the official wheel of Gran Turismo Sport. The wheel adds quite a few new features, including four rotary encoders, two analog sticks, and a new tactile transducer on the rear to add an extra dimension of depth to the force feedback. The wheel is definitely one of the best ever from Thrustmaster, however some irritating quirks and a stubborn reluctance to progress in some categories hold it back in my opinion. In the other corner we have the Fnatic CSL Elite for the PS4. After a notably controversial back and forth between Fnatic and PlayStation, we finally get a PS4 compatible wheel. The CSL Elite PS4 brings many features from the Club Sport Wheel version 2.5 and brings them into a more accessible package. Some frustrating quirks are also present in this wheel, but it's still a great option as well. You can see my full review on each wheel in the description below, but now let's get ready to rumble. As a disclaimer, I want to explain how I've been testing each setup. The TGT wheel has been tested with the Thrustmaster T3P GT, which comes with the wheel and the TH8 RS shifter, which is not included. The Fnatic CSL Elite PS4 was tested with the Fnatic Club Sport Pedals V3 with the brake dampener and brake performance kit. That is not included in the package. However, there are packages that are able to be sold with or without pedals, which usually is with the CSL Elite pedal set, which in my opinion is one of the best bang for the buck pedal sets. I would have tested with them, but I don't have them anymore for testing, but you can see my review of those pedals in the description below. For the first category, I want to compare the buttons present on the wheels. The Thrustmaster TGT is packed to the brim with buttons and features. The wheel features 14 buttons with 12 on the wheel and 2 on the base, a D-pad, and paddle shifters. The TGT is the first Thrustmaster wheel to feature full-fledged rotary encoders and it does it in style. Four 12 position rotary encoders are included on the wheel. In addition, two joysticks allow you to easily navigate features such as GT Sports Photo Mode and Livery Editor. The paddle shifters on the rear have quite a solid feel to them and are reminiscent of most of Thrustmaster ecosystem wheels. The CSL Elite PS4 is a bit of an enigma for me. While the wheelbase does support features such as rotary encoders and joysticks, those are not present on the CSL Elite PS4's rim. The CSL Elite PS4 rim is a fairly minimal affair with 12 buttons on the steering wheel, a directional pad, and two paddle shifters. The D-pad is definitely not one of my favorites, but at least it's functional. The buttons have a fairly decent click, but I think the TGT buttons felt slightly more satisfying. The paddle shifters for the CSL Elite PS4 felt quite a bit better than the ones on the TGT. The snap dome paddle shifters gave a feel that resembled magnetic paddle shifters to an extent and provide a satisfying if a little quiet click. In terms of the buttons, I have to give the edge to the TGT. The wheel rim is just full of features that aren't present on the CSL Elite PS4. For the next comparison, I decided to make rim size and feel a separate category because the buttons and the rim are two different things in my mind. A rim can have a lot of features, but your hands are going to be wrapped around the grip of the rim most of the time, and that's what makes it very important. The TGT steering wheel measures at 280 centimeters or 11 inches. The leather wrapping on the steering wheel is decently padded, which is alright, but it does make the steering wheel feel even smaller than other rims at the same size. After spending time with larger steering rims, such as the Sparco rims for Thrustmaster, the TGT's rim just feels awkward in comparison. The CSL Elite steering wheel measures at 300 centimeters or 11.82 inches, which I think is the sweet spot for all-purpose rims. The rim is a weird hybrid of leather on the grips and then the rest of the wheel is wrapped in suede. I would have preferred the rim to be wrapped with a single material like the CSL Elite steering wheel P1, but this rim does have a fairly solid feel. However, the diameter of the rim really does put it above the TGT, and that is why for rim, size, and feel, I'm giving it to the CSL Elite. For the third comparison, it's covering the wheelbase. Both the CSL Elite PS4 and the Thrustmaster TGT 
feature powerful bases with a lot of features. The Thrustmaster TGT is by far Thrustmaster's most advanced base, featuring the most refined force feedback as well as the new depth force feedback tactile transducer to add more depth to the sim racing experience. The wheelbase is made of a strong plastic and that is an interesting look to it. A wire mesh on the top serves as ventilation for the fan. The rear of the wheelbase allows you to plug in a Thrustmaster pedal set and a shifter. The CSL Elite is not Fnatic's most advanced wheelbase, but I believe it does gain a narrow edge over the TGT. The wheelbase on Fnatic's base simply has a wider variety in terms of features and functionality to offer more long-term options for the owner. The wheel features rev lights on the top of the base, which can be seen as an acquired taste, but I personally am a fan of. On the rear of the base, you have a whole slew of options in regards to what hardware you can use on the wheel. You can plug in two shifters at a time, a handbrake, and pedals into the base. The CSL Elite PS4 is the only wheel currently on the market that allows you to use a handbrake on the PlayStation 4, which is good for titles such as Dirt Rally, WRC7, and Assetto Corsa. Now we're on to one of the very important topics, force feedback. Both the CSL Elite and Thrustmaster TGT use belt drive force feedback, and they work very well after years of refinement. Both companies have years of experience developing belt drive systems, and now Thrustmaster has a new trick up its sleeve. The TGT has what I feel to be the best force feedback in a Thrustmaster wheel. It is very strong, very smooth, and also very quick. It feels very responsive in your hands and does a great job communicating the feeling of the car to you. Thrustmaster also has a new trick up its sleeve in the form of depth feedback. A tactile transducer is placed on the rear of the wheel to give further sensations of the car through the wheel, an example, going over rumble strips, hitting a wall, etc. However, this feature is only available in Gran Turismo Sport. If this was on more titles, then I would have called this Thrustmaster's killer app on the PS4. Because it's only limited to one title, it comes off feeling more like a one-trick pony rather than a genuine innovation. The CSL Elite PS4's force feedback is functional and it doesn't really go for any new risks or new innovations. The force feedback is just as strong, smooth, and quick as the TGT, but the trick the CSL Elite has is the quick settings. You can adjust a variety of options through the wheel to add or subtract dampening, strength, quickness, and so on. You can fine tune the wheel to work with your personal preferences and have different presets for different titles. In regards to force feedback, I'm kind of split. If you're looking to spend most of your time on Gran Turismo Sport, I'd say the TGT gets the edge. For just about anything else, I'd say the CSL Elite beats it out. Now we're coming down to compatibility. Compatibility is a weird topic in regards to wheels. First off, there's compatibility in regards to the wheel working with different PlayStation 4 titles, and then there's if you're looking to use a wheel on different platforms, etc. The Thrustmaster TGT would be one of the best solutions for just PS4 gaming. Compatibility is limited to just two modes, Gran Turismo mode and Other mode. Gran Turismo mode is used for GT Sport, Other is for every other PS4 title, as well as driving on the PC. Just about every title I tested worked with the TGT due to it running with the Thrustmaster system, and it worked quite well. Features such as the rotary encoders and the tactile transducer are not supported by other titles. However, the rotary encoders are supported by PC titles in other mode. For the Fnatic CSL Elite, it is sort of the jack of all trades, master of some. This is the only wheel on the market that is compatible with the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Note that for Xbox One compatibility, you will need an Xbox One compatible rim, such as the Universal Hub, CSL Steering Wheel P1, CSL Steering Wheel Elite P1, or the upcoming McLaren GT3 rim. However, the wheel does work well on the Xbox One, it works adequately on the PS4, and it works great on the PC. Why I say it works adequately for the PS4 is there are two modes that you would need to use on the PS4. There is the native PS4 mode and then the compatibility mode. Not all PS4 titles work with Fnatic wheels, unfortunately. Titles such as Drive Club and F1 2016 
they do not support the CSL Elite PS4. Other titles such as Project Cars and I believe Dirt Rally require you to be in the compatibility mode, which is sort of limiting the full extent of the CSL Elite PS4 features. And then other titles such as Dirt 4 allow you to use the native PS4 mode, which gives you the most functionality out of the wheel. Fnatic's compatibility is a bit of a mess on the PS4, but at least for most modern titles, it works well. So again, my conclusion is going to be somewhat mixed. For the PS4, the TGT takes the win. For everything else, the CSL Elite wins. If you're looking to just game on the PS4, the TGT gets the win due to it being the most easily plug and play wheel for that option. For just about everything else, the CSL Elite PS4 wins just due to the sheer compatibility options available. The last category I'm gonna throw out there is the ecosystem. Both of these wheels have ecosystems that have been developed over years that have many different accessories available. They have also gone in different directions. The Thrustmaster ecosystem consists of a variety of steering wheel rims, two shifters, and a handbrake and pedal set. It's a decent variety, but I always get the feeling that Thrustmaster plays it safe with their ecosystem. They do not yet have a load cell option for their pedals yet. The shifter has been the same design ever since the early 2010s. The handbrake is new, but I'm a little concerned it might be overpriced. And it just feels like they're always playing it safe with their products. We haven't seen a notable jump in quality or variety. Thrustmaster's ecosystem is decent, but there's nothing really that jumps out at me and says, wow, that's awesome. Thrustmaster is also releasing a dash unit for the PlayStation 4. However, I think it is just grossly overpriced at almost 200 US dollars, and especially with it only working for the PS4. Fnatic's ecosystem consists of a wide variety of rims with all different shapes and sizes, two different kinds of pedal sets with three different configurations, a handbrake and shifter that are both compatible with the PS4, and just a sheer variety that I believe puts it well above Thrustmaster. In addition, all of the rims in the Thrustmaster ecosystem feature the dash displays, and some of them feature shift lights as well. So with that, you get that added functionality that you don't get as much with Thrustmaster. For the pedals, both pedal sets in their three pedal configurations include load cells, which definitely puts it in a class above pedal sets from Thrustmaster. If you put the Fnatic Close Sport pedals side by side with the Thrustmaster T3PA, there's no comparison in terms of build quality. So in terms of ecosystem, I'm going to give the win to Fnatic. So let's get on to my final thoughts and what I recommend. For the person looking to stay in the PlayStation ecosystem and is spending a lot of time in Gran Turismo Sport, the Thrustmaster TGT is likely one of the best solutions for that. The TGT offers the widest compatibility on the PlayStation 4 platform, it has the best support for Gran Turismo Sport, and the rotary encoders and the tactile transducer definitely add something that is kind of missing from the Fnatic. However, for just about anything else, I would recommend the Fnatic CSL Elite PS4. I'd say for titles like Assetto Corsa or some of the different rally titles available on PS4, Having a handbrake working on that console is a great asset and it's pretty awesome. Also, don't forget that the CSL Elite PS4 also is compatible with the Xbox One, which adds a whole new level of support for the platform. Fnatic's ecosystem is just far more varied and has a lot more features and I think that really expands the lifespan of the CSL Elite. And the bottom line comes down to price. The Thrustmaster TGT has the manufacturer's suggested retail price of $800, which, for what you get, I think is just pretty darn steep. For the Fnatic CSL Elite PS4 and the CSL Elite LC pedals, you would be looking at about $700. You're going to be sacrificing the tactile transducer and the rotary encoders, but for $100 less, 
you're getting a far superior pedal set in my opinion. Add about a hundred more dollars and you also have a wheel that's Xbox One compatible. That is a great option to have. So my personal recommendation is the Fnatic CSL Elite PS4. I think that it is the best option available for the maximum compatibility among different platforms. If you look to just stick with Gran Turismo Sport, the TGT is alright. But then also if you're looking to just stick with the PS4, then I might just recommend the T300 RS with the T3 PA pedals. But personally, my recommendation is still with Fnatic. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts. What do you think is the best out of these two PS4 flagship wheels? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.